Okay, I've got 12.30 on the clock, uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeremy Walsh. I'm the Software and Control Manager here at Shadler Yesco. I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar on Factory Talk Optics, uh, a Rockwell Automation Visualization Platform. A few quick housekeeping items before we get started. Your cameras and microphones are turned off to keep things running smoothly. Please post any questions in the chat and we will answer them throughout. Uh, this training will be recorded and posted online for future viewing. So if you're seeing this after the fact, welcome. Uh, I will now turn things over to Dan Wagner, who will be the host for this webinar Wednesday. Dan, take it away. Thank you. Uh -huh. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for attending today. Uh, we jump right in here. We've got a lot of items to cover in a relatively short amount of time. So what is factory talk optics? So you're going to probably see more of a focus around this as time goes on here, but uh, it's essentially a new open scalable visualization platform you see with options. So the options we're going to focus on really the the three we're going to focus on today are around design deployment and graphic options and then the extensible options are really the you know the amount that you can build from there with the opc ua foundation and, th and that's really more of a kind of application customer specific um type of conversation so you know, probably too much to build on for the purposes of today, but we'll really give you the the 10,000 foot view around some of these other options. So from a design standpoint with Factory Talk Optics, the Optics Studio software comes in two flavors. So there's a, a standard version and a pro version. And what that allows you to do is if you, you know, maybe you just want to design locally on your PC as you've done, you know, for a long time now with other pieces of software. You have the ability to do that with the standard version, or if you are getting more cloud based um, or want to have more, you know, kind of multi user collaboration in the cloud, you also have the ability to design and deploy those applications with a uh, you know with an internet browser and then regardless of what type of device you're using you can you can build that project and deploy it dynamically across multiple different devices so here's just a breakdown of standard versus pro and as you can see really standard kind of focuses around the local install local build local save and then pro expands upon that with the you know, cloud based saving the multi user collaboration. And the biggest point of note is the standard is a free software. So you can hang up from this call later and go onto the website, which I'll show you and download the standard at no charge in the uh, pro version of the software is a it's subscription only at this point it would probably likely stay subscription only but uh it's around five hundred dollars annually for the for the pro so from a deployment standpoint um the you know really the scalability the flexibility is around you know you create a application once regardless of the type of device it's being deployed to the operating system uh the size you know really really any piece of glass from a, a file that's only been created once and to a client that's either a native optics client like a pc or an optics panel which is will follow up on the next slide or uh, an HTML client through a web browser. So the optics panel, uh, kind of a similar idea to a panel view where it's a you know contained HMI unit that has the runtime tools for optics already installed on it. 
and is also a uh, remote access point as well. Uh, if you're familiar with Rockwell's new offerings in the remote access world, these units have a remote access runtime perpetual license included with them. And you can see they, they come in compact and standard terminals. The compact terminals, I believe, are just two catalog numbers. Uh, and then the standard terminals would expand upon that as far as sizes and, and features go. Um, and they're, they're both available with single touch or multi-touch uh, in addition to other features. And they do have a Linux based OS. So obviously the goal around that to be to perhaps expand the uh, the life cycle compared to, you know, maybe Windows supported operating systems. So here's an idea of how the optics runtime licenses work. And this is really where you start to see a big difference between traditional HMI offerings and the optics HMI offerings, and that is the scalability of the runtime licenses. Now, the runtime licenses are perpetual, um, and they're really sized based on what what Rockwell calls feature tokens. So, depending on how many features you're looking to use, would that correlate to the size of runtime? license that you would need so all the way from extra small there on the left which could be a, a single opc server a single controller and a single hmi graphic all the way up to extra large and and even now uh unlimited or yeah unlimited licensing and we'll take a look at kind of how those feature tokens are are determined and and really the the big benefit to that is you you can you can size a runtime and only pay for what you need rather than purchasing something that these are the features that come with it whether you use them or whether you don't so in addition the uh the graphics in optics as as i discussed before um they're intended to you create a, a single runtime file and be able to push it out to multiple different displays of different sizes of different ratios um, and give you the ability to have automatic layouts in you know, rows, column arrays, however you wanted to, to deploy uh, multi touch gestures. You can kind of see the demo, the way they're scaling those graphics and the the user interface projects aren't structured in pages uh, but rather containers you'll see we'll demo the software a little bit you'll you'll see the the nomenclature for containers and those containers are what allows the positioning uh, of the objects to automatically adapt to whatever display format you might be using so just a quick overview what we discussed um and we went over the design deployment the graphics so the to expand a little bit on the extensibility um the, their library management whether it be rockwell libraries or you have the ability to have user-defined libraries um there's thousands of graphical objects included uh third-party drivers included which you'll see as well in the demo and uh, there's there's some lightweight reporting and dashboarding. Um, there's there's all, they're also currently working on uh, process libraries, different faceplates. So you know it it is currently version one point two. You know it's 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 early releases. It, it's a it's the software has existed for a while um, under the the awesome family which you may have seen for our industrial PCs, but it's a new Rockwell software. So a lot of those Rockwell add-ons are, are still in development. So right now we're looking at the Factory Talk Hub. If you're not familiar with the Factory Talk Hub, um, you know, obviously a larger conversation what we can have today, but there are a lot of apps and tools inside of Factory Talk Hub for 
you know, the direction that that Rockwell and, you know, the world are heading with the, you know, a lot of cloud based tools. Um, some are free, some are paid apps, but if if it's something you're not familiar with, get in touch with your account manager and we can have a conversation. But the reason that we're here is factorytalkhub.com is that is where you will access the factory talk optics app. So this is really the the optics hub for lack of a better term. So as I discussed earlier, the standard version of the software is free and it's downloadable through this site and this link here, um, the download link here, or if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see kind of the, the date creations and releases there. Obviously at this point, there's new versions often, um, but that's where you can download the Optics Studio. If you did have a runtime license, this is where you can come in and download the runtime tools. And for the sizing, we discussed when you want to do runtime sizing, you can discuss with you know the the resources at your distributor, or if you're trying to figure out what size of runtime license you need, you can come in and use this tool. Say you have a native HMI client and five web clients, and then uh, you might want to do some alarming, some data logging, and you can see the these tokens. And they'll they'll add up at the top, and then that'll change the package recommendation. So I can say I have a Rockwell Ethernet IP connection. I might have multiple controllers, but they're Rockwell hardware that actually takes a token off. Or your incentive for using Rockwell hardware. Uh, we'll leave that alone, and then it'll give you the breakdown of the the feature sets that you're using, the amount of tokens that you're using for that application, and for this specific example, it's telling me that a station runtime light small would be the recommended runtime package and it also tells me here that that package includes eight tokens so there's one more available if i wanted to add on something else so then with that i can either take this catalog number and send it to my salesperson or my automation specialist for a quote or you can check that copy the catalog number and then if you click the once this goes away Click the Purchase Factory Talk Optics. That'll take you to the Rockwell software portal. And you can paste that catalog number. Add it to your cart. And then you can see there's a, you know, Optics Runtime 8 feature token. Uh, want the, like, so there are, they are perpetual. The runtime licenses are perpetual. So you see your one time cost plus your annual support in your cart total. So you can access all that pricing right from this runtime sizing tool. And I, I can tell you this, that's the small, the, the extra small runtime license, I believe starts somewhere around the $700 range. So back on our optics hub, there's also a tab for resources. So the resources tab is gonna have some demo applications that might show you some features. Uh, some graphics. We can open one up here. This boiler demo. So these are interactive. They're they're running on some some sort of emulator, uh, likely Logic or, or likely Factory Talk Echo uh, in a Rockwell facility. But you can get an idea of the what the graphics look like. Um, some of the, the different pages that you have available. If you want to come in and and mess around with those. But what I'd like to do now is actually show you the software. So this is, so this will be a, the Factory Talk Optics Design Studio. Uh, I'm running on my PC. So this is my, you know, the desktop act, app. Um, you can see there's two options here. You can you can use a default and push it out to an optics panel. The only difference with the optics panel selection is it comes with some predefined widgets for the panel specifically. I'm just going to use a 
default application. Um, you'll see the options to use version control, encrypt screens. We're just going to use a custom window size, but you see the different options you have there, be it PC or an optics panel. We'll create a application. So here's my dashboard. Um, Configure communication devices, we'll show that. The other three we won't get into, but again, this is more of a 10,000 foot view of the software. If I expand my UI folder, I can see the, the pre-existing main window type. Um, working on a laptop now, so I'm gonna adjust some windows. So we're gonna just make a quick demo application. Um, set the width and height of our main window. I'm going to have this main window be always on top and just create some pages inside of it. We'll just call this webinar demo. And then if I wanted to add a logo, say the RA logo, I can just drag and drop that onto my project. And then I can align that however I want it to be. Put it on the right. Definitely make it smaller. Top corner. And again, I apologize for the scaling. Um, drag and drop a logo. And then I'm going to add some pages. So I'll right click on my UI. I'm going to add a folder. All that pages. And then in there, I can add a container, which we discussed earlier, and I'm going to add a panel inside this folder. And these will be my, you know, my panels, my displays, however you want to refer to it. I'll call this page. And then this page, I'll just configure for whatever size I want it to be. I'm going to obviously make it smaller than my main display. We'll set these to 10. So that's essentially my page template. So I can now go back into my pages folder and I can say new pages and I can add that template however many times I want to into this project. And you can see now these are grayed. So uh, if I need to make any change to the size and layout of those pages, I would do it to my main page and then the subsequent pages would update automatically off of that template. So now that I have some pages installed, I can come back to my main window and I'll add a navigation panel. I'm just going to stretch that. For my um, I'm just going to stretch this across. There should be might be missing here right now. I apologize, but there there is a there are alignment tools to be able to set those to stretch, but in any case, I can stretch them automatically. And then I can take my pages. And I can drag and drop onto my navigation panel. Now I should be seeing text there. But you can see they're they're dropping onto that tab. I, I might have missed a step. As I was adding those on, I apologize for that. But regardless, I can come into my page one and say add some objects in. We'll do a uh, an LED. Uh, We'll add a spin box and we'll add a switch. I'm going to reposition these a little bit. And again, just to show you the 
the dynamic linking inside of the software. These are obviously just offline pre-canned objects. Uh, but I'm just going to give my spin box three states, and I'm going to or I'm going to add a dynamic link for my LED to my switch, which is checked. I'll turn the LED on, and then maybe I'll change the color based on the state of the spin box, so I can come in, go to my advanced tab, add a key value indicator, and here I'll add the dynamic link for that indicator to the value of my spin box. And I can click that key value converter. I can add a couple states. Give it zero, one, and two to correspond to my spin box. And I'm going to make the value colors. So then I can come in and I can put a associate a color with each value of the spin box. And then when I come back to my project and then run the emulator, there I have page one. I can turn the LED on and off. I can change the color of the LED with my spin box. So again, basic programming there, but giving you an idea of how simple the uh, dynamic linking is. And to, I guess, get a, a little bit more practical is if you have a project and you're obviously designing it with some sort of logic code, you now have the ability as we kind of approach the, the the full digital twin even further there's also a tool called factory talk logics echo so if, if any of you that are familiar with the older uh logics emulate echo kind of builds on on that functionality of having a, a true logics emulator so this is the echo dashboard so I can add, or I can add a controller, or I can add a controller from an ACD, which I'm going to do for the purposes of this demo. And I'm going to choose this Optics Echo demo project I have created. And I'm going to leave all this as is. I'm going to add that into this chassis. And then I can see over here, I have this controller. It's in an OK state, and this this button here means it's turned on. So I can then take that ACD path. I can check this box and download it to this emulated controller. Once that downloads, we'll switch over to the Studio 5000 program. OK, so now in my Studio 5000 program, I can come into Who Active. And there's my emulated controller. This emulate Ethernet driver is included with factory talk links. I can say go online. It will still ask me to upload download because it does technically still see a difference in the controller type. I'm going to upload. But the most important thing to notice is that this is just an L81E. This isn't an emulate controller that I had to remove my actual controller and add an emulate controller for the purposes of testing that i'll then have to remove again and put my other controller in that l81e or whatever l8 series at this point l8 series of processor uh currently echo only has uh l8 control logics and guard logics controllers but they're actively developing for um, the 5380 compact logics will be next and then so on from there but I can change this controller to a run mode. And then I have another optics project that was already created. And in there, I have uh, another page. Which are, these are some of the, the pre-canned graphic objects that are included in optics inside of the libraries. You can see there's thousands of objects in here uh, beyond what's being created further. Um, 
So, and then I have dynamic links for some of these objects, just to some test code. But you can see here under my comm drivers, that's where I see my controller. And that was all configured in the dashboard uh, under the comm drivers. There's my controller with the route. And I can see online, these are the tags that I see offline. Additionally, you can create the controller and add the tags offline via the tag importer. Um, let's just expand down here. There's a tag importer. You can choose your ACD, your offline ACD file, and it'll show you all the tags associated with that. But if I come back to the emulator and I run this application online with my emulated controller, I can see the and the, this isn't an animation. This is just a uh, just the the predefined level uh, appearance with this object just linked to a tag that I'm running through uh, an emulated controller through Logix Echo. So again, simple simple type of of dynamic linking, uh, fully virtual, and you can kind of start to see how this becomes advantageous from a, a design standpoint. So uh, it's good timing because that is all I had. I'll, uh, I believe Jeremy's been monitoring the chat. Yep, I sure have. So uh, I believe we are uh, up to date with uh, answering chat questions. Uh, we are... Uh, set up to conclude uh, this webinar today. If anyone has any other questions, um, please feel free to post them in the chat here for the next few minutes. Uh, if something should come up later, you have questions, would like more information on today's topic, uh, or would like to get a hold of us for a site visit, more information, uh, we would welcome you to email us at the info at sydist.com. Uh, located at the bottom of the slide here, <clears throat> or you can feel free to reach out to myself, uh, Dan Widener, or anyone else on the automation team here at Shadler Yosko. Uh, if there's no further questions, we will uh, go ahead and conclude for the day. We, again, thank you very much for attending. Uh, it's great to see everyone uh, supporting this and have interest in this product. We think it's a great offering and it's positioned well in the marketplace.